Boys and girls, I'm a poet, and I didn't even know it. I'm back. I'm back better than ever. Um, I forgot one thing. Mrs. The great Mrs. Muhammad reminded me. Uh, I wanted you to look up the poem, The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. All you have to do is put it in, in the uh, search bar. It will come right up. It's one of the greatest poems ever. What I wanted you to do is the first three things that we're working on. Um, the line breaks, the white space, and the imagery. See what was in those, in The Road Not Taken. I'll give you another poem today at the end where we're looking at the next three, repetition, alliteration, and assonance, um, to see how those fit in. We'll finish up the week with onomatopoeia and rhyme and then you're going to start writing your own poems. But remember, I have the colored paper over here because poetry is an art. It drives you. It goes to your soul. It's something that wants to come out, and everyone's a poet. I'm going to start you off today with, the, with a fun poem. Um, it's by one of the greatest poets ever, uh, Raoul Dahl, um, from... England, um, and he had the crocodile. No animal is half as vile as Crocky Walk, the crocodile. On Saturdays, he likes to crunch six juicy children for his lunch. And he especially enjoys just three of each, three girls, three boys. He smears the boys to make them hot with mustard from the mustard pot. But mustard doesn't go with girls. It tastes all wrong with plates and curls. With them, what goes extremely well is butterscotch and caramel. It's such a super marvelous treat when boys are hot and girls are sweet. At least that's Crocky's point of view. He ought to know he's had a few. That's all for now. It's time for bed. Lie down and rest your sleepy head. Shh, listen, what is that I hear? Glumping softly up the stair? Go lock the door and fetch my gun. Go on, child, hurry, quickly run. No, stop, stand back, he's coming in. Oh, look, that greasy, greenish skin. The shiny, shining teeth, the greedy smile. It's Crocky Walk, the crocodile. Just a way to start. You should start every day like that. Um, we're going to go over five poems today, and then I'm going to give you a poem that I would like you to see if you can um, adjust and find the concepts we go over today. So as I said at the beginning, last time we went over line breaks, white space, and imagery. Today we're going over repetition, alliteration, and assonance. Um, we'll finish with onomatopoeia and rhyme. So repetition, the repeating of words, phrases, lines, whole stanzas, it emphasizes a feeling or an idea. Alliteration is the repetition of consonants, sounds at the beginning of the words near each other. Assonance is the repetition of the same vowel sound and words near each other. So let's start with repetition. So we're going to read, welcome to the night. Tell all of you who crawl and creep, who buzz and chirp and hoot and peep, who wake at dusk and throw off sleep, welcome to the night. To you who make the forest sing, who dip and do dodge on silent wing, who flutter, hover, clasp and cling, welcome to the night. Come feel the cool and shadowed breeze. Come smell it you way among the trees. Come touch rough bark and leathered leaves. Welcome to the night. The night's a sea of dappled dark. The night's a feast of sound and spark. The night's a wild enchanted park. Welcome to the night. So when we think of the repetition here, as it says over here, repetition is the repeating of words, phrases, lines, the whole stanza. 
Well, this is a line. And the line that they repeat is welcome to the night. At the end of each stanza, again, stanza, we went over it the last time. A stanza is a paragraph for a poem. As we said with welcome to the night, which is a review, welcome to the night. Um, the first part was about the animals that were there. The second part was about some of the different types of animals. And then it was about where they hide out. And then this was like the conclusion. But at the end of each stanza, it doesn't matter which one, um, the author, Joyce Sidman, ended with, welcome to the night. It helps you feel the excitement of the night that the animals feel. And it also creates a rhythm. Poetry needs rhythm. You take a poem that's good, you can turn it into a song. So we'll go from there. Now we're going to look at a word that's repeated. All right, because it can be a word in repetition. So here it is. Diving beetles, food sharing rules. Any type of lava is mine, as well as all tadpoles, minnows, and newts. Sticklebacks, <clears throat> caddisflies, spiders, and small frogs of any kind. Mine, snail eggs and bugs, all mine. In short, if it moves, it's mine. If it's anywhere near me, near me, it's mine. If I'm hungry, and I'm always hungry, it's mine, mine, mine. And if by chance I choose to crawl up yonder, smart weed, bask for a bit, open my armored wings, and fly about my kingdom, within which everything is mine, do not forget what is mine, for if I return and you have taken it, you, you, you are mine. So they use, Joyce Sidman uses the word mine at least 10 times in here. And, you know, she's emphasizing that everything for the beetle is mine. So even though they named it the diving beetles for uh, food sharing rules, he's not sharing anything. And that's a poetry in itself. So there you have your petition. Let's look at alliteration and assonance. Um, so when we go over here, we have three poems over here that will symbolize these concepts. Now, I'm going to read the poem, and these are a little, the first poem is Dream of the Tundra Swan. Dusk fell, and the cold came creeping, came prickling into our hearts as we tucked beaks into feathers and settled for sleep. Our wings knew. That night, we dreamed of the journey, ice blue sky in the yodel of blight, the sun's pale wafer, the crisp drink of clouds. We dreamed ourselves so far aloft that earth curved beneath us and nothing sang, sang but a whistling bee of light. When we woke, we were covered with snow. We rose in a billow of white. So, we're looking for repetition of consonant sounds, like leaps and laughing suddenly stop, starts spinning silently, drifts down, cold, come, creeping. Leaps, laughing, LL, suddenly soft, they're next to each other, starts spinning silently, drifts down, cold, come, creeping. All right, so now let's listen to this. We've done this one before in another day. Snowflake wakes. Snowflakes wakes, whirling, arms outstretched, lace sprouting from fingertips, leaps laughing in a dizzying cloud. 
of pinwheel gathering glitter drops into air, suddenly stopped, and full, a lattice of stars spinning silently, drifts down, touching, tickling, clinging, clumping, hugs earth, sighs and settles, sleeps, tucked in its own blanket. Bank, blanket. All right, so you have, um, as they had this one, leaps laughing, that was over here, suddenly soft, Stars spinning silently, stars spinning silently. Sigh, settles, sleeps. They didn't have that one over there, but it was over there. Okay. And this is the repetition of the vowel sounds. So you have to look in between. Feeling, leaves, ceiling. Ain, same, remain, same. Pale, way, pay. A, 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 all right. Oak after dark. As nighttime rustles at my knee, I stand in silent gravity and quietly continue chores of feeding leaves and sealing pores. While beetles whisper in my bark, while warblers roost in branches dark, I stretch stretch my roots and till the hill and slowly slowly drink my fill a thousand crickets scream my name yet i remain the same the same i do not rest i do not sleep and all my promises i keep i stand while all the seasons fly to anchor earth okay so if you look at this one when you're looking at the repetition of vowel sounds, okay, so feeding leaves, ceiling, E, E, E. Uh, I didn't notice that many uh, other ones. Remain the same. Uh, they could also be considered rhyming. Up here, um, Not many so alliteration is is a little more than assonance um so but you're seeing it, you're feeling it, you have to play with words when you write poems, okay, so we learned about repetition, alliteration. Nasin, it's today. If you can find some of that, what I'd like you to do is again, in your computer, I'd like you to look up Carsick, the poem Carsick by Amy L.D. I am Carsick, open a window. I am Carsick, take the pill. I am car sick. Rest your eyes. I am car sick. Sick. Shh. Be still. I am car sick. Drink some ginger ale. I am car sick. Can you try to wait? I am car sick. Now we're almost there. I feel better. Darn. Too late. Because <laughs> they just arrived. Um. So you're mostly going to find repetition in there, but I'd like you to discuss the repetition. And then I'd like you to look up one of your own poems and see if there's any alliteration or assonance. Just pick one. You have to play with words. Uh, I gave my class a poem to do on their friends before we did the unit. And I think I might re-give that because when you're seeing this, um, really, it's the way that you understand poetry and then what they're trying to do. So your job is this. You're going to look up um, by Robert Frost, The Road Not Taken. Then you're going to, in that, I want you to look at how he used the white. I want you to look at how he used the um, line breakers. And then... He's very, when he does his, he's very uniform. He's a traditional poet when you look at him. 
today some poets um, this would consider be considered more of today's type of poetry. They take a lot of liberty in how they set the poem up, how they use the poem. Um, these two classes are excellent. We're going to be using poetry in our end of the year project. So, you know, we're just touching upon it. Let's start reading poems, looking at poems, listening to poems. Thank you.